Jersey. Yeah, police in Hackensack opening fire on a 24-year-old man. It happened late this afternoon, and we have just learned that that man has died. New Jersey reporter Tony Yates at the scene in Hackensack with the breaking details. Tony. Good afternoon, and according to the Bourbon County Prosecutor's Office, two Hackensack police officers were sent to that house where you see the uh, orange colored gangsters on the second floor. That's 10 Temple Avenue. This was on a parole welfare check. Now, obviously, it did not go as planned. Now, we want to show you the mugshot released uh, by the prosecutor. 24 year old Elvin Diaz was shot by police after some sort of altercation involving him and those two officers. All three were taken to Hackensack Universal Medical Center, where, as you said at the time of this newscast, uh, Diaz has died. All right, we apologize for that. Obviously, we're having some audio problems with uh, Tony's microphone. We're going to try to reestablish our live shot with her and get right back to that breaking news coming out of New Jersey right now. But meanwhile, we're going to move on to some other news. And a good Samaritan came to the aid of a man beaten by a group of bikers in Washington Heights, recounted the incident today in court. Sergio Consuera described how he stepped into the melee to convince the bikers to stop beating an already bloodied Alexander Lien who had been dragged out of his Range Rover. Two men, one of them an undercover police detective, are charged with gang assault. Nine others have pleaded guilty. Consuera says his testimony went smoothly, but he feels badly for the defendants as well as the victim. You don't feel okay when you know that people are going to do time, they, that they could do time and things like that. You don't, you know, you don't feel right, you know. I mean, like, these are people that they were up there, you know, trying to have some fun, but some people decided to make some mistake. As for the bikers, uh, as the bikers dispersed that day, Consuela called 911. He says he feels that he saved Leon's life. We're going to have much more for Inside the Courtroom coming up on Eyewitness News at 5. We want to go back to that breaking news story. Police involved shooting in Hackensack. We have News Copter 7 over the scene. And Shannis, can you give us an update? Absolutely. What we know at this point is that this all happened earlier this afternoon when two officers were responding to a welfare check requested by the Parole Services Division at 10 Temple Avenue. Now, when they got there, it was a little bit unclear at first, but we are hearing from sources that the suspect, 24-year-old Elvin Diaz, answered the door and was armed with a knife. Officers, the two officers that responded to the scene, shot him several times. At this point, the two officers and the suspect were taken to Hackensack Medical Center. As we now know, that suspect did die from his injuries. The two officers, though, are believed not to be injured. They are just being checked out just as a precaution. Now, as you look at the scene here, you're looking down at Temple Avenue on the top part of your screen is where it comes in with Main Street and Johnson Avenue. A huge police scene here. You can see the sheriff's crime scene unit as well as the Bergen County Prosecutor's office is on the scene and even the park across the street included in this crime scene but again those officers just responding to a welfare check requested by the parole services division gunfire erupted and the suspect 24 year old elvin diaz died as a result of the injuries reporting live over hackensack shannon soon channel 7 eyewitness news all right thank you shannon well now to the mansion murders in washington dc a story that has captivated the nation police have identified the suspect accused of killing four people and they think he is in our area. Yeah, 34 year old Darren Dylan Wind has a girlfriend in Brooklyn. Investigators say that they believe after the murders of the Savopoulos family and their housekeeper, Wind took a bus north and could now be hiding out in the borough. Eyewitness News reporter Kimberly Richardson is in Canarsie with the details. Kimberly. Well, as you just mentioned, Darren Wint is no stranger to Brooklyn. Sources tell Eyewitness News Wint, who should be considered armed and dangerous, spent the night here last night. That's again, according to his girlfriend, who right now is here inside the 6-9 precinct. She's speaking with detectives. She lives right here in Canarsie. Police are also searching this area, looking for surveillance cameras, video which will hopefully reveal where he went next. Long we time. had information to believe he may be here, um, and right now in the South Brooklyn area. From the nation's capital to the streets of Brooklyn, what began as a manhunt for an alleged killer in Washington, D.C., has taken a dramatic turn right to our area. You know, in, in, in situations like this, you identify everybody he's close to, and that's where they led this to Brooklyn. Officials believe Darren Dillon Witt may be somewhere in Brooklyn. He's the main suspect in the quadruple murder of a prominent family in D.C. Authorities suspect the 34-year-old right now is armed, hiding somewhere in the southern part of the borough. In Brooklyn, the information they're working with, uh, the U.S. Marshals were actively uh, uh, in that area. 
One week ago today, a fire at this D.C. mansion led to a more gruesome discovery inside. Officials found the lifeless bodies of Savas Savopoulos, his wife, 10-year-old son, and their housekeeper. The family was part of the who's who in that area. Savopoulos ran American Iron Works, a large distributor of metals for construction contractors, where Wint once worked. Authorities say DNA links Wint to the slayings. Investigators are still trying to piece this one together. Wint clearly has ties to our area. On his Facebook page, he claims he lives in New York, New York. Sources tell Eyewitness News the suspect recently stayed here with his girlfriend. She spoke with detectives at the 6-9 precinct in Canarsie, told them Wint was heading back to D.C. and is thinking about surrendering, something police highly recommend. Well, I mean, right now you have uh, just about every law enforcement officer across the country that is aware of his, uh, his open warrant and uh, are looking for him. Tracking his every move, even here in Brooklyn. Police were able to track down Wynn's girlfriend by pinging his phone, pinging her phone, rather. She told detectives he came here by bus again last night and left early this morning. To get a better look at him, go to our Facebook page. In Canarsie, Kimberly Richardson, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Thank you, Kimberly. Nearly a half dozen hecklers interrupted Police Commissioner Bratton's plea to the city council for more money and more police officers. The protesters, who shouted no new cops, were ejected from the council chambers, and the commissioner resumed his testimony. He said 450 more officers are needed to keep residents safe from several new challenges. The police is including challenges like combating violence, hostility towards officers, as well as threats from ISIS and terrorists. It is decentralized and much harder to detect than threats orchestrated by al-Qaeda. Presented under the banner of ISIS, it is marked by effective messaging and solitary lone wolf actors, terrorists who operate outside the kind of command and control systems or cells that we've learned to penetrate and dismantle. Uh, many council members have said they are in favor of hiring up to 1,000 more officers. Mayor Bill de Blasio, however, says no additional officers are needed. Liz. Well, police in Manhattan are searching for the suspect responsible for a string of robberies while riding a stolen city bike. Investigators say the man in this surveillance video has been linked to at least 11 robberies in Gramercy, Chelsea, Kipps Bay, and Union Square in the last few months. Police believe the suspect steals a city bike from a docking station and then sneaks up behind women and grabs their cell phones and their purses. The victims range in age from anywhere between 21 to 42. And a wrongful death lawsuit is being filed in the NYPD killing of an unarmed man in Brooklyn. A Kai Gurley was fatally shot last November in the stairwell of the Pink Houses in East New York. His domestic partner, Kimberly Ballinger, says she is suing on behalf of their two-year-old daughter. The lawsuit accuses officers Peter Liang of being reckless and negligent as he and his partner performed a vertical patrol in the building that night. and also names the housing authority and the city for poor lighting and other conditions in the building. Liang faces manslaughter charges in the death. Well, today, the effort to crack down on the mistreatment of workers at New York nail salons took a new approach. Volunteers fanned out across the city to help educate those workers on their rights. Eyewitness News reporter Stacey Sager on the Upper East Side with more on this story. Stacey. Well, Dave, they called this a day of action. Hundreds of these volunteers fanning out to subway stations, but also here to nail salons to educate both workers and owners about exploitation on the job. That is, workers earning less than the minimum wage, working long hours, and potentially exposing themselves to health risks. It was a story that first appeared in the New York Times a couple of weeks ago. Well, today, the commissioners from the city's Department of Consumer Affairs and the Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs we're also on hand in communities with a large immigrant population, handing out flyers in six different languages so workers understand their rights. And speaking with nail salon owners about what their responsibilities are, both with minimum wage as well as with paid sick leave, which is a law that um, DCA enforces. And that really is a way the city is looking to approach this because typically the state actually regulates these nail salons. The city is also urging consumers to stay alert. 
We will have a lot more on the story, including reaction from customers in nail salons coming up in another live report at 5.30. For now, we are live on the Upper West Side. I'm Stacey Sager, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Stacey, thank you. We're going to turn out to Long Island where businesses are busily getting ready for the unofficial kickoff to summer. Restaurants and stores hoping this will be the beginning of a very profitable season. Long Island reporter Kristen Thorne is in Freeport this afternoon with the story. Kristen. Well, Liz, thank goodness the weather is supposed to be better this weekend because right now it is freezing out here. You can see the turtleneck. It's raining a little bit. It's really just not nice out here right now, but the weather is supposed to get better by this time tomorrow night. These streets on the nautical mile here in Freeport should be packed. Businesses say they are ready for these customers because after all, it was a bad winter. Ah, oh, it just sounds like summer, but don't be fooled. There's a lot of work to do. Mostly just stocking the alcohol, stocking the foods, uh, making sure we have enough ice. Ice, you know, it's a big, we use tons of ice. Oh yes, the beer man is busy, but so is anyone who deals with food. We stumbled across these guys furiously shucking clams to get them to restaurants. I have nice sea bass here. I have the nice flood of bee liners. At Bracco's on the nautical mile, they're getting prepared for the rush of customers. These are the bushes of crabs, so if anybody wants it. So all ready to go? All ready to go. At Al Grover's Marina, they're also in deadline mode, getting boats fine-tuned, cleaned, and into the water. This is the push. Memorial Day is actually the day that everybody really officially wants their boating season to start. In order to be fully prepared for this weekend, of course, you need your suntan lotion, your sunglasses, and don't forget about your fancy hats. The owner of Key West Outfitters here in Belmore says he is stocked and ready to go. Who isn't ready for summer? We deserve this weather. We deserve it. But veteran Owen Fuchs says let's not forget what this weekend is all about, our military and those who have served. It was 50 years ago that he returned home from fighting in Vietnam. For me, it's it's a real it's a real heart wrenching weekend, you know, and uh, my heart goes out to all the boys that are buried out in Pine Lawn, the military cemetery. And uh, God bless all the all these kids that are over in the wars now and God keep them safe and let them do the right thing. Come home in one piece. Yeah, I wanted to be sure to include that in my story because so often this weekend with all the barbecues and the parties, which are wonderful, we often forget about what this weekend is about. And of course, there are many veteran and Memorial Day activities scheduled for this weekend as well. So another thing for you to check out. We're live in Freeport. I'm Kristen Thorne, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Kristen. And Kristen will be helping us celebrate this weekend on Saturday. Join us for our special kickoff to a Long Island summer. We'll be live at the Bethpage Air Show at Jones Beach at Saturday night at 7 right here on Channel 7. You can also watch it on our ABC app. We're looking forward to it. And still to come on Eyewitness News first and foremost, government employee accused of an extortion plot. He was arrested for hacking into women's accounts and then stealing compromising photographs of him. The disturbing details are ahead. Plus, danger at the airport. Safety changes prompted by an Eyewitness News investigation. And I'm meteorologist Lee Goldberg. Big anticipation for the first unofficial weekend of summer, and it doesn't feel that way just yet. It's a little brighter to the north. We've had a little mist here. You saw Christian Thorne in Freeport, Long Island, where it's drizzly and only in the 50s. Look at the radar right now. The showers hug the coast. It is going to be another cool night. And then the warm-up will come in just in time for the holiday weekend. We'll have your seven-day AccuWeather forecast. That's next on Iowa News First at Four. Keep it here. Me, Kyle. You name it. Dust, pollen. And pet dander. He's allergic to it. Stanley Steamer is the first carpet cleaning service to be certified asthma and allergy friendly, eliminating an average of 94% of common household allergens like dust, pollen, and pet dander for a cleaner, healthier home. Goodbye, Mr. Steamer. Bye, Kyle. Call now about our $99 carpet cleaning special. Call 1-800-STEAMER. For the ride around Norfolk, and I just wanted to say Geico is proud to have served the military for over 75 years. Roger that. Cap is waiting to give you a tour of the Wisconsin now. <laughs> Could have parked a little bit closer. It's gonna be dark by the time I get there. Geico, proudly serving the military for over 75 years. 
Stewart's are looking to make over their master bedroom. So what do you want to do in here? I just wanted to feel like a luxurious retreat. Bold fabrics and fresh design create a bedroom that is simply chic. With the HGTV Home Design Studio at Bassett, we'll create an indulgent oasis that fits the Stewart's creative personality. What do you think? I love it. I'm feeling the retreat coming through. It's absolutely fabulous. It's beautiful. It's a dream come true. It's perfect. Are you ready for your big reveal? Save 25% storewide during Bassett's Memorial Day sale. Mazda is KBB.com's lowest cost-to-own brand over five years. When Martin Cooper invented the mobile phone in 1973... Hello? Yes, Marty. Guess what we did? Connectivity took a mighty leap forward. Staying connected is also the Mazda way. That's why the 2015 Mazda 3 uses cutting-edge technology. Hey. Hi. Headed home? On my way. To keep square access inside Newark's air traffic control center. Can new upgrades improve the airport's bad rep for delayed flights? Plus, New York City's major subway project with a new reveal. The Second Avenue subway slowly becoming a reality. Next at 5. It's 4.15 right now. Time to take a look at the ride home on this Thursday. And it looks like some uh, people trying to get that holiday weekend started early. This is a live look at the Long Island Expressway at the Utopia Parkway. Uh, either side you take is not a good choice. Both are heavy. Over at the Hudson River Crossing, it's 20 minutes at the inbound Lincoln Tunnel and 15 minutes on the outbound side. It is 30 minutes right now at the outbound Holland Tunnel. Well, we're learning new details about a former State Department employee accused of running a so-called college sextortion scheme. He's being held in $50,000 bail today. Investigators say Michael Ford used his work computer at the U.S. Embassy in London to hack into the social media accounts of young women at colleges all around the U.S. Prosecutors say he then stole their compromising photos and sent emails to the victims demanding they record racy videos for him. He is a despicable piece of humanity, if the charges are true. If he used his State Department computer to commit these crimes, he also flunks the stupid test. Well, investigators say Ford was caught when a diplomatic security agent searched his computer and found a spreadsheet detailing his exchanges with the women. Ford is charged with hacking, cyberstalking, and blackmail. Well, right now, officials declaring a state of emergency at an oil spill in Southern California. The officials are saying roughly 8,000 gallons of oil has been raked, skimmed, or vacuumed so far. And that's less than 10% of what's spilled. And all officials estimate 105,000 gallons spilled into ocean from a broken pipeline. Containment and cleanup has been helped by light wind and calm seas. Today, the LA Times reports the pipeline operator has more than three times the national average reported incidents when it comes to spills. Mm. I know you know that's such a beautiful It is oh, such a awful. magnificent area yeah. of the country. It's so hard to see. And all the photos that we've been seeing of all the animals and yeah. everything like that, just been no, really tough. So, Lee, I see you out there with your heavier coat on today. Yeah, you know, it's, it still has that kind of raw, you know, damp feel out here. It's chilly, but you know what? I'm just thinking about the forecast. And I'm feeling warmer. I mean, it's, it's going to be so great as we head into the holiday weekend. Yeah, we have an iffy day in there, but we have a nice warm up. We're going to get off to a beautiful day tomorrow. So if you're starting your weekend tomorrow, you got to get away plans. We're in great shape there. And overall, it's good news. And even the, the whole week ahead coming up, there's lots of summery weather to love. All right, let's go ahead and look outside. We have a lot of clouds. We're looking to the south here and the skies look more threatening. And that's what we suggested yesterday is that we were going to be cloudier, cooler, and wetter the closer to the shore you are. So the Jersey Shore, South Shore of Long Island, and even more so Staten Island than here on the west side or toward the Bronx, closer to that rainfall. We're only at 60. It doesn't feel actually as cool as yesterday because there's really not much wind, and the humidity is up a little bit. The high today, only 62 degrees, so 10 degrees below average. 52 in Long Branch. Man, that's raw as rain in Brick, New Jersey at 52. Sayreville's coming in at 58. Long Island struggling as well. The nicest, again, we talked about this, the opportunity for 65 to 70 degree weather in the Hudson Valley. Look at Poughkeepsie. I mean, it's doing really well in a partial sunshine, and it feels great. So a much different feel. Look at the difference in humidity from north to south. Pair of threes for Poughkeepsie, yet 76% Belmar, 94% in Wrightstown. So it gives you an idea. All the moisture is really huddled near the coast. 
So have your umbrella handy this evening, even in New York City for a few sprinkles, light showers, but definitely along the coast. If you're north and west, not so much. Now, that threat for rainfall will go into the wee hours of the morning. We will all wake up to clearing skies, lots of sunshine tomorrow. You will notice a pretty good breeze, but it's a warmer breeze, and we get in the low and mid-70s during the afternoon. It feels great. There just might be a stray storm in the afternoon. Look at the split across the area. You've got this conveyor belt of rainfall. Most of it's light, but it's raw and cold. And you're looking at Monmouth and Ocean County, and then it's brushing parts of south shore of Long Island. See some showers and the umbrella needed there in Seaford, West Babylon, Islip over to Sayville. New York City, yeah, Brooklyn and Staten Island at times for the time being, the five boroughs are dry. And then there's the best weather in the house. I mean, you're looking at northern New Jersey, the Hudson Valley, and Connecticut, seeing breaks in the clouds. So low pressure is down the coast, and it's developing off a of Hatteras, and it comes to the northeast. So the back edge of that rain, even though it looks like it's moving out, will actually expand westward one more time. See, the backup signal is actually playing right now. And then it'll come back on us through about 3 in the morning, and then it'll move out, just like the signal ends. And then the cold front starts to push that offshore. Now, we're out ahead of that cold front, so we're warmer tomorrow, but behind that cold front, some pretty chilly air. So these 60s and 50s you see here will turn into 70s tomorrow, but then we'll get another cold shot to start the weekend. Don't worry, not the 30s you see in Hudson Bay, but definitely back in the 60s for Saturday, but at least it's via sunshine. So here's your forecast map for tomorrow. Warmer sunshine, 75. Might be a stray storm in the afternoon hours. It would be very spotty. That cold front comes through. We have a chilly night on Friday night. There's actually some freeze watches in our northern suburbs, but a pleasant start to the holiday weekend after a chilly morning, 69 in the afternoon. It is a bit of a breezy morning, but nice day overall, 69. Tonight, lots of clouds. There's some rain, mainly south and east, and then there's some late clearing. We'll go down about 53, 40s north and west. Partly sunny and a much nicer afternoon tomorrow, 75. It's a great-looking day, just a stray afternoon storm. And then tomorrow night, it's chilly. Make sure you have the jacket or the sweater because it's brisk and cool. Upper 30s north and west, about 48 in the city. So, Liz and David, coming up at 4.30, it is time to rank the holiday days. I'll tell you for right now that Sunday's the best day. We have a beach day. But what is the close second and which one is the iffy day? We'll deal with that in the seven-day AccuWeather forecast when we come inside. I want to leave you hanging. You're playing with my mm. mind. Mm. Yeah, what are you doing to Someone's me Someone's trying to plan a pool party. Yeah, we got things to do. We got a special on Saturday. All right, we'll wait till you come 20 back. 20 minutes and you'll do all your planning. <laughs> all you. right. We can wait that long. Thanks, okay. Lee. Yep. <laughs> also, we come in Eyewitness News first and foremost. A string of break-ins in one of the area's most affluent communities. We're going to tell you the warning police have for residents. And from rapper to hero, we're going to tell you how entertainer Lazy Bones from the group Bone Thugs in Harmony saved a stranger's life. Friday morning. Are you ready for me, New York? Jesse J performs live from Central Park in a free GMA concert, and you're invited. So get there early to see Jesse J on... Good morning, America. Only on ABC7. Tonight... Keep watching. TV's newest phenomenon continues. This might be your final question. 15 seconds. Darkness. Uh, Will uh, anyone uh, conquer? Uh, 500 questions. The seven-night event continues tonight at 8, 7 central on ABC. This is amazing. I love this car. Real people are discovering surprising things at Chevy. This is a road trip car. We're sold. It's so pretty. <laughs> They're good-looking cars. It feels great. Perfect. This is not what I would expect from a Chevy at all. Current qualified competitive lessees can sign and drive this 2015 Chevy Cruze LT for around $147 a month. Or during the Chevy Memorial Day sale, get cash back for 15% of the MSRP on select 20 15 models and stock the longest. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Only Optimum has a new offer just for cord cutters. Get a whole lot without paying a whole lot. Free digital broadcast TV with internet and unlimited data, talk, and text for the everyday low price of just $34.90 a month with no contract. Get up to 40 broadcast TV channels for the shows you're into and internet for all the stuff you're into with a free smart router and free McAfee protection. Plus, only Optimum gives you unlimited access to over 1 million Wi-Fi hotspots at speeds faster than 4G at no additional cost. And with Freewheel, the all-Wi-Fi device, get unlimited data, talk, and text to use anywhere you're connected to Wi-Fi. If you want to cut the cord, this offers for you, and only Optimum's doing it. Call 1-866-200-9983 now. You'll get a whole lot, but won't pay a whole lot. Less than $35 a month. Also ask about HBO Now. Call one 866 